Hello everyone, it's Robbie Rhino here, and before we get into the main subject of today's video, I'd like to say there is a giveaway going alongside today's video. It's my end of August giveaway, and you can win any of the prizes you see on screen right now, with the main prize being the Chieftain Hybrid 120 British Western Alliance Premium Era 2 Heavy Tank, a very tasty tank indeed, with great DPM very fun to play and very capable on the battlefield and there are a whole host of runners up prizes you can win a top secret key card confidential key card a classified key card one lot of four camo vouchers one lot of seven days of premium time and one lot of three days of premium time this giveaway runs from today until wednesday the 30th of august that is at 10 p.m. GMT and I'll announce the winners in the comments or pinned comment of today's video as well as in the description of this video and on my Twitter which you can find in the details on today's video. If you already have the Chieftain Hybrid 120 I'm afraid you cannot win it again however you can always enter for all of the other prizes so let me know in your comments and to enter all you have to do comment your gamer tag and platform in the comments on today's video and at 10 p.m on wednesday the 30th of august i will announce the winners so if you want to enter good luck it's a very very good tank and i highly recommend it i do have a video on my channel and i'll remember to tag that at the end of today's video so thank you very much for your support good luck with the giveaway and enjoy today's video Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I have three replays for you in the AMX 13 SS11 TCA. So this is the French Era 2 Western Alliance Cold War Premium Light Tank and it's my favourite Cold War Premium Tank and probably one of my favourite Premium Tanks inside World of Tanks console over both the World War 2 and Cold War game mode and this video marks part one of a three-part series where I detail my adventures on my road to the three marks of excellence which I have now got in this vehicle. So at the start of every video in this series I'll talk you through my commander and equipment setup, a little bit about the stats of this tank and then I'll talk you through the gameplay and why I enjoy playing this vehicle so much and yet why it is one of my favourite premium tanks inside World of Tanks console. But before we get going just a quick mention there is a giveaway going alongside today's video. It's at the start of today's video. It is chaptered so you can skip backwards and have a look at what you can earn. There's a pretty tasty era to Cold War um, heavy tank up for grabs as well as some other goodies and it runs until the 30th of August so if you want to enter uh, comment down below of your gamer tag and your platform and yeah good luck so this vehicle I'll start off by talking you through my uh, commander and equipment setup but we'll just wait for a nice ATGM here as we guide it into the uh, lower hole there of the Chieftain Mark V and that's the crazy things you can do with this vehicle. Um, so for the next three videos in this series I run the exact same equipment and commander setup. In terms of my equipment I run both pieces of mobility equipment because the base mobility isn't too good for an era to light tank and I also run the advanced concealment and in terms of my commander skills sixth sense born leader rapid loading camouflage expertise muffled shot green thumb steady aim rapid aim and snapshot um, so in terms of the equipment like I said you want to boost up your mobility as much as possible in this vehicle because it does not get around the battlefield like a BMP2 or something of that ilk it is a bit sluggish um, it's not too bad when you get up to full speed but the engine power is lacking and one of the best attributes is the concealment so do everything you can to boost that up just do not use the silent driving as it is ineffective on light tanks um, and then I'm just running some gun handling commander skills to get the most out of this uh, primary 75mm gun. But in my opinion, yeah, this vehicle is all about the four-shot ATGM autoloader. So it has two flavors of 
um, fire part, as I've just alluded to. There's a six-shot 75mm autoloader capable of dealing 1080 damage in 10 seconds, and you can use that in conjunction with the four-shot autoloader, the ATGM launcher, which is capable of dealing 4840 damage in 45 seconds from the first shell, and there's no time penalty uh, between switching between your 75mm and your ATGM launcher which means that you have a pretty hefty um, damage per minute if you technically combine them uh, without that time penalty. Just hold down that ammo select button and you can switch between both the uh, gun and the ATGM uh, launcher and yeah, you can deal a hell of a lot of damage very, very quickly. You are only limited by the amount of uh, ATGMs you carry and uh, 75mm rounds in the battle. But that's it for the first gameplay here on Great War. We finish with a victory there and uh, a whole host of medals, including the high caliber, finishing second on our team with two kills, 9.3k direct damage, 955 assistance, and with a booster, yeah, we're making almost uh, three quarters of a million without a premium account and nearly 800,000 silver with a premium account. So a nice 10.2k combined damage game there to start off this series we're now going to head on into the second gameplay i'll talk you through a little bit more of the attributes of the firepower of this vehicle and where i'd like to take it on the battlefield so i'll see you in the second gameplay in just a second so we are now into the second gameplay of today's video and we are here on nomenhan in the amx 13 and whilst i make my way into position I'll briefly talk you through some of the specifics of the firepower which I alluded to in the first gameplay of today's video. Then we'll get talking about map positioning and all that jazz. So, like I alluded to, you have that 75mm six shot autoloader capable of dealing 1080 damage in 10 seconds and you have a four shot ATGM autoloader capable of dealing 4840 damage in 45 seconds. In terms of your 75mm, what I want you to be aware of is that your alpha damage is very low. 180 damage per shot with that 2 second interclip reload means that you aren't dealing an astronomical amount of damage. You do have to put magazine after magazine into people for this damage to build up. And your penetration is extremely poor. 212mm on your standard APCR and only 231mm on your premium APCR means you have to use it against other lightly armoured vehicles or you have to get to your size and rear of the stronger armoured tanks like an FV4211. At mid to long ranges you're going to try and struggle to uh, snipe with this gun. It feels quite derpy with my setup only a 0.27 accuracy around 2 second aim time and you're going to have a lot of penetration drop off with these APCR rounds so um, you can only really use them against heavily armoured vehicles when you're desperate and you're on your downtime between loading your ATGMs. In terms of the shell velocity itself, 1000 metres a second on your standard APCR and 1125 metres a second on your premium APCR. It's not too fantastic for uh, sniping, however at mid to close ranges you can make it work. Uh, just give a little bit more lead than you would with something like your main battle tanks or your other tanks in era 2. Uh, lastly, in terms of the DPM with this 75mm, you're looking at around 3,578, which it does seem like a lot, but you have to make that poor penetration, poor shell velocity work, and the relatively derpy nature of this 75mm, uh, so take that with a pinch of salt. Next, the 4-shot ATGM autoloader has great penetration, 660 millimeters of penetration per ATGM with big boy ATGM alpha damage of 1,210. You do have an astronomical uh, interclip reload of 10 seconds and with that 1,210, it means that you deal that 4,840 in 45 seconds. So to unload your whole magazine takes a long time. Think of it more like separate ATGMs and you will do a lot better with this ATGM launcher. The actual uh, DPM, if you penetrate every round, is 3,751. So quite hefty because of that great alpha damage. And when you combine that with the 3,578 DPM on your 75mm, 
you're looking at a combined DPM of 7,329, which is great if you're penetrating every 75mm round and every 80GM. It won't usually happen, but you have a great firepower potential to use if you pick and choose your targets accordingly. The only thing that holds you back is you can only carry 60 rounds with your 75mm and only 8 ATGM, so two full magazines with your ATGM launcher and 10 full magazines with your 75mm. So you want to make the most out of every time you fire. You don't have those kind of uh, opportunities to blind fire and to waste shells and ATGMs with this vehicle you want to pick and choose your battles use your concealment get as close to your opponents as possible uh, dump your firepower into the side and rear or the weakest part of their vehicle then try and use the mobility and concealment to get away however you will struggle to get away like we're doing here as we are being hounded here on Nom and Han with my setup and in, in terms of the mobility the horsepower is only 367.5 and the power to weight ratio on this vehicle is around 24 so poor compared to something like a BMP2 who we're now firing at. Uh, 75 forwards and 29 kilometers an hour in reverse with only 44 degrees a second hole rotation and 46.31 degrees a second on the turret it can struggle um, so you want to use things like the enhanced smoke screen which i carry to your advantage and you want to practice like we did just a second ago firing 80 gms on the move and the best way to practice is just to practice you keep your left hand which i'm using obviously to move the tank itself as still as possible and then just focus on moving my right hand and guiding the atgm trying to limit the amount my holes turning and uh, yeah as long as you can deliver that atgm you can usually track your opponents in place as well and avoid getting rammed and yeah you want to try and utilize every skill in the book to try and get the most out of this tank including the mobility which is absolutely fantastic on the amx 13 I've got my steel concealment down to around 149 meters and that is obviously the same as it's a light tank as on the move and it means you can ambush your opponents get into some very sneaky positions get some great scouting off and it's good for situations like we're in now however we are one versus seven so i'm not expecting the world but it's one of the most capable tanks when you are outnumbered because you can use your concealment to ambush vehicles. And as long as you have firepower in the bank and you have ATGMs and 75mm rounds loaded, you can do some very nasty things. We're only 230 millimeter, uh, meters away from this MOBA. If we are millimeters, millimeters, that would be insane. But we got this sort of jump on him, which means that we can use our um, 75mm here to our advantage as you can see we've run out of 80 gms which happens very frequently especially if uh, you take chancy shots however you can use your great concealment and the mobility like we're doing now to try and run away and try and uh, kite these tanks into the different positions picking them off one by one however we are one versus seven so it's going to be extremely hard and we don't have any any 80 gms in this particular gameplay so we are going to just get our last magazine out here and then that'll probably be all she wrote for this gameplay but we still had a pretty big impact and that's what you want to try and be doing with this vehicle is extremely powerful because of the high alpha damage and the firepower potential that I am happy to accept the flaws in terms of the penetration on the 75mm and also the mobility with this tank. So here on Nomenham we did manage to get over the 10k mark we managed to pick up 10,200 damage 138 assistance and two kills in a defeat there on Norman Han picking up a pretty nice profit with or without a premium account and that's it for the second gameplay we're now going to head on into the third one where I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing in the gameplay where I'm going on the map and what my thoughts are during the battle so now we are on Great Wall in the AMX 13 in the third gameplay of today's video and we've talked about the specifics of the firepower We've talked about some of the mobility of this tank and a few things to watch out for. And in this gameplay here on Great Wall, I'll talk you through my thoughts on where I'm going on the battlefield 
and what I'm doing to try and get the most out of the Air Max 13. And that will be the same kind of thing that I'll be talking about for the next couple of parts in this series. Apart from at the start of every video, I'll talk you through my commander and equipment setup in case you have missed it. So here on Great Wall, I've come to the central location. My reasoning being I'm able to try and get some vision into the center of the map. And I'm also going to try and ambush someone who is coming up into this brawling location in the sort of G3, G4 location. It means you have side shots like we're doing here, and that is usually the case um, at the start of every battle. However, I drive like an absolute idiot. Ideally, I wanted to reverse into this situation, but as you can see, it's very crowded indeed, and I just wanted to take the opportunity whilst tanks are making their way into position, whilst the enemy are distracted to try and get my first ATGM off. And unfortunately we have taken um, a hit at the start of the battle and because you don't have great um, hit points in 2300, you want to try and preserve them for as long as possible because the more hit points you have and the more firepower towards the latter stages of the battle, the more dangerous you are. And then we took the opportunity to get our ATGM into the side of that Stingray. Our third ATGM here into that T72M1. And then we're going to follow it up immediately with our 75mm. And you want to practice switching between your ATGM and your 75mm by holding down that ammo select. Sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly if you haven't played for a while or you haven't played tanks with the multiple weapon system. But the quicker you can switch, the quicker you can get your damage out. We put an ATGM and uh, some 75mm rounds into him and he was subsequently taken out. Then we turned our attention to the vehicle that we have just turned away from and now we're going to make our way down towards the base. As I can see, we are being um, at threat of the enemies capturing our base. So whilst we are on the move, reloading a full magazine of ATGM, say I had one left, I'd always go for the reload now because I know I'm going to be moving. So I'm making sure that once I get into position, I am fully loaded. And then I'm just going to try and set up an ambush, trying to survey my sort of battleground here to see where my next target is. These two tanks are kind of sat on this ridge and the 30B2 Farad is down here to the right. I can go all in and um, probably take him out before he takes me out. However, I'm very aware he has got a very dangerous auto cannon as well as a very nasty primary gun as well. But we're going to make our way um, advancing towards this 30B2 Farad, trying to keep as much hard cover as possible. So I... Uh, I'm able to ambush him as close as possible, giving me the best chance to land my ATGM. However, I do spot this light tank on the other side of the ridge line, and uh, I was thinking about firing, it would give my position away, so I let the Magak fire take that object 934, and now we can surprise this 30B2 for Rad as he is running back towards his base. And yeah, the key now is to switch between my rounds as quickly as possible, firing on the move there towards the rear of the 30B2 Farad and fortunately we track him in place and that means we have just enough mobility because we've improved it with our setup to get around him without taking any fire from that auto cannon. And now with that long intricate reload on the ATGM launcher, it means that we now have an ATGM to fire on this FE4211. I tried to drop it down into the square patch below the gun on the FE4211, which is a weak point. However, from that distance, I should have just gone up close and personal like I'm doing now. Use our distraction of the BMP2 to get behind this FE4211 and uh, give some justice to that very, very overpowered uh, era 2 British heavy tank. Pop in a smoke screen there, just in case uh, anyone was coming down off of the hill. There's only one tank left and uh, we're going to go very slowly. You can see the very poor mobility with this light tank. It's not like a BMP2 at all. You have to think about your engagements. As this is the last vehicle alive, I'm just gonna come up, put an ATGM into this M60A2. We set him on fire, and with the great module damage you're doing with these ATGMs, um, you deal fires, Amorax, lots of uh, commander damage, that kind of thing. And it is all good news. The module damage is 605 on these ATGM, so very nasty indeed. And that's it for the first part in this series. We finished there with a nice profit with or without a premium account. 
two kills, 10.2k direct damage, 460 blocks somehow, and yeah, a nice all-round game here on Great Wall. And the games only get better as we progress through this series, so hopefully by the end there will be some even more epic gameplays in the AMX 13. But yeah, the lowdown, great vehicle, great firepower, you've just got to be able to utilise that firepower with the poor penetration and on your standard 75mm and mobility and yeah you should be golden in the amx 13 so that's it for today's video remember the giveaway uh, ends on 30th of august check that out at the start of today's video good luck if you're entering thank you for the support and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now